here's my drone with 16 motors and propellers with super ugly landing gear that I said you guys would never see again. I lied. Well, this will probably be the last time because I have different aluminum tubes under there that I'm working on for a different design. So yeah, it has eight arms. Typically when you have a drone with eight arms and eight motors and propellers, that is called an octocopter. But of course, since this has 16, this is a hexadecacopter, which is kind of fun to say. <laughs> and today we're gonna talk about the motors and propellers that I'm using on this. So each of these arms is a coaxial setup. Um, the motors we're using are T-Motor U82 KV100 motors, and the propellers are 28.2 inches. So all of these motors and propellers that I have are actually from crash drones. For example, here is uh, one of my propellers. You can see that it still has mud all over it, and the tip of this is completely missing but the other side is completely intact. So what I have been doing is I remove the side that is broken or fractured or whatever, and I throw on another half from a different propeller that's in good shape. And then uh, here I have a couple of motors to show as an example. This one already came off of a coaxial configuration. I, I took it apart and uh, it has dings all over the bell housing. And then the mounting bracket or whatever you want to call it is totally destroyed. Uh, and the motor is completely seized up too. It does not move at all. Here is uh, one other example that I have of a coaxial setup. This motor is great. It's in great condition. This other side, I almost can't spin at all. So it must have like, I mean, it doesn't even feel like it has sand or anything. It feels like it has like gum in it. I don't, I don't know. Um, I have no idea what happened, but uh, this side is still good. So what I've been doing is I, I cut this in half and I slap another one on the other side and then I have a coaxial set up with two good motors on it. So when you're building a flying machine, specifically one that flies entirely by producing downward thrust, um, like a rocket or a drone, and by that I'm excluding things like balloons or fixed lifting surfaces like wings, so just drones and rockets, it's really important to take into consideration something called the thrust to weight ratio. And in order to maneuver in the air, um, you need a thrust to weight ratio of at least two to one. So basically you have to be able to produce at least twice as much thrust as your machine weighs. So here's how I like to think of it. Uh, you have a drone and it has a thrust to weight ratio of one to one, right? So it can produce exactly as much thrust as it weighs. Let's say your drone weighs five pounds, I don't know. And it can produce five pounds of thrust. So you have it on the ground and you crank it all the way up to full throttle. Uh, for the purpose of this example, let's pretend there is no ground effect. So let's just say you're like resting on a mesh or something where the air can go straight through it. Um, essentially, if you're producing five pounds of thrust and your drone weighs five pounds, your drone is just weightless, but it's still going to stay there on the ground and you can't take off and you can't maneuver it. But then of course, for this example, if you like manually lift it in the air and you decide to hand launch it or whatever, you have your five pound drone with five pounds of thrust going down full throttle and you can move your hand and it will stay still. So it has, it's producing just enough thrust to counteract the earth's gravity, but no more. So it can hover there in place, but it can't go up. It can go down by decreasing the throttle, but you also, you know, you can't even yaw because that involves slowing down some motors while you're going to lose some thrust then. Um, it's a whole mess. So you just can't, you can't control it if you don't have uh, more than a one-to-one -one thrust to weight ratio. Now, on the other hand, if you have a thrust to weight ratio of like three to one, so your propellers are able to produce 15 pounds of thrust and the drone weighs five pounds, well, you can do all kinds of crazy flips and maneuvers and whatever you want in the air because you have a, a super high thrust to weight ratio. So with that being said, if you want to build a flying car, something that's capable of lifting a person, we have to do a little bit of math. So let's say the flying car weighs 100 pounds, just for easy math. And let's just say a pilot weighs 150 pounds. Well, your aircraft, fully loaded, weighs 250 pounds. In order to maneuver in the air safely, you will need to produce at least 500 pounds of thrust on your 250 pound flying car. So with that in mind, we're going to look at some of the specs of these specific motors and see what my drone is going to be capable of lifting. So this is the motor we're using. It's a T-Motor U82 KV100. The picture shows KV85, because I guess I don't have KV100, but I have 100 selected over here. Um, so I'm going to scroll down and click on specs. And then down here, 
most websites, so when you're selecting motors to use for a drone build or a flying car, most established companies with really solid motors will have a list of test data like this. And it'll show you at what throttle percentage you're going to get a certain amount of thrust with a certain size of propeller and at what voltage. So we're going to look at type here on the left hand side. I'm going to scroll down to KV100. Okay, here's uh, the start of KV100. Voltage, I'm going to be running a 12S setup. Looks like that might be, oh, okay, they, they don't have just 12S. So looks like these two parts of the table right here, um, yep, these two will be what we're referring to. KV100 with a 12S setup. Um, the propeller, I'm actually using a 28 inch propeller. So let's look here. If you have the throttle at 100%, your thrust is 8,716 grams. So that is the information we need to work with. So I have a calculator here. I'm going to convert this to pounds because I'm from America. I know there's a lot of you guys that um, watch my videos from other countries. Uh, so I'll have on the screen, I will also have a conversion for kilograms. So we have 8,716 grams. So that's 8.716 kilograms times 2.2 is just a hair under 20 pounds of thrust for one motor, which is awesome. So we have 19.17 pounds of thrust um, times, I have 16 motors. That gives us 307 pounds of thrust. So if our estimations were correct, this wouldn't quite be enough to have a really solid grasp on controls. If we were talking about a 250 pound flying car, um, 300 pounds is not quite enough thrust to have really solid control. But I expect the frame of mine to weigh under 100 pounds. I'm estimating around 70 pounds. And then I actually weigh 140 pounds. So that brings us to 210 pounds of me inside of my flying car. Now, if we're comparing 210 pounds to about 310 pounds of thrust, uh, that is what I would call good enough. That gives us a thrust to weight ratio of about 1.5 to 1. Once again, I'm just doing this with materials that I already have. If I were designing this 100% from scratch, I would use different materials. Um, I would not be using 16 propellers either. I'd be using fewer propellers with a higher thrust per motor. Um, but this is what we've got, and this is going to be good enough, and I am super excited about it. So I know there are some of you guys that really appreciate a tutorial like this. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. Also, I'd appreciate a thumbs up on the video if you found this information interesting. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.